I was approached by one of my coworkers, and he told me he had some stuff I could work on if I was interested. I told him, have you seen my channel? Of course I'm interested. He then tells me that it's a steel trimmer, but he warns me that it's been sitting in a barn for several years and it would be very dirty. This is what it looked like when he gave it to me. What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by. Today's project is a steel trimmer and the problem is that it won't start. Now the biggest reason why it won't start is that they did not take the steps they needed to for long term storage. Now it does run for a bit after putting some fuel into the carb's throat, so more than likely the carb is our only problem. But before we take a look at this carb and service it, I want to give it a good cleaning, that way we don't get dirt in places where it's not supposed to be, like in the fuel tank or in the carb itself. While I'm cleaning it, I'm going to answer some of the questions I've gotten, or at least some of the more interesting ones. Now, I'm a huge fan when it comes to steel equipment. I think they're made very well, and that's why you see so many of them on lawn care trailers. The problem is that to be competitive, some of their components and even some of their more affordable trimmers are made halfway around the world where labor costs a lot less. Now I have heard a lot of complaints from some of the viewers who have had some problems with the more affordable line of trimmers from steel, but this is not one of them. Back when this was new, it was almost $600 US, which I don't know about you, is a hefty price to pay for something to trim your grass with. But for that money, you get a very robust machine that should last for a long time if you take care of it. Well, that didn't happen here. Now it's really nobody's fault when it comes to this trimmer because if I recall, I think the coworker said that this used to be his father's and I think health issues sidelined him for a while so when it was put up with fuel in the tank, it wasn't done on purpose, they just didn't realize that the next time they were going to use it was going to be years later. So the first question is, does it matter to you if something is made overseas? And the answer is, of course not. There are so many things made overseas that if you didn't want to buy them on that fact alone, I think you soon realize how much stuff is made over there. We're just people, and some days you might not be on top of your game, and you end up making mistakes at work. It does happen, and unfortunately, sometimes the stuff you messed up on does get out to the public. I don't blame the companies for poor quality, they're just trying to make a profit by using the lowest bidder. So if it's a cheap product, then more than likely it's going to be designed and built to a cost. Does that mean that if you buy the more expensive trimmer from steel that it's not going to have problems? Of course not, but I do think you get more for your money and higher quality is one of them. Now, will that keep me from buying the cheapest gas trimmer from steel on the market right now, which is an FS38? Not at all. Just keep in mind that if it's only priced at $140 US, what kind of quality assurance can I expect? The way I see it is, if you buy the cheaper trimmer, there will be a higher chance for issues than if you bought the FS240R, which costs almost five times as much. If you disagree with my logic, that's perfectly fine. You're absolutely entitled to believe what you want, just as long as you have an opinion, which is what matters to me the most. Now the cleaner that I'm using is an orange based cleaner, but most anything will work as long as it can cut through dirt and some oil. When it comes to sticky old gasoline, you can also use stale gas or brake cleaner. I'm also trying not to use water to wash away the dirt, but as long as you're careful, it's not a problem. Just keep it away from the muffler and the air filter. The next question is, can I use a pressure washer to clean my trimmer? And the answer is sure, but I would not use it for the engine portion, only the lower part of the shaft and the guard. If you were going to use it for the engine on a trimmer, you're welcome to give it a try, but don't blame me if you break something important like the purge bulb or one of the fuel lines. Speaking of the purge bulb, I got an interesting comment the other day where the viewer said they never use the bulb, they just choke the carb and pull the rope to remove the air from the system. I don't have a problem with this method because it does work as long as you have a good functioning carb, but I do have some concerns with this method. The first is that for anyone who is following the directions on how to start their trimmer that is equipped with a bulb, the directions will not apply anymore and you run the risk of flooding your engine with too much fuel. So for me, I would rather just follow the directions and it should start. Now back in the day when most equipment did not have a bulb, it was the standard procedure but once the bulbs came out, the directions changed as well. So even though I'm fully aware of what's going on and what the possible issues are, I still use the bulb as described in the directions. Now I do plan on showing the no primer bulb method in the future, but I do worry about the people watching who aren't aware of what I'm doing might try the same thing and cause some bigger headaches for themselves. So you can see why I hesitate showing this method on camera. I didn't mention it earlier, but this trimmer was missing the air filter cover when I got it, so as part of the repair I had to replace it and luckily it wasn't very expensive. I also had to replace the air filter as well and I think combined it was under $20 shipped to my door for both. 
Now, if I was using water to wash away the dirt on this trimmer, I would probably put a plug into the air inlet on the carb, or maybe just wrap the entire filter base in a plastic bag. The water shouldn't get into the carb unless you turned it on the muffler side and was pouring it into the intake, but as long as it's sitting normally, it should be okay. In the last Q&A, I talked about how I believe small engines will be around for a lot longer than most people think, but the comment did come up saying, what if they did ban it? What would happen? If I had to clarify their statement, I think they're asking about a ban on the sale of new gasoline equipment and not the banning of their usage. Well, if I had to guess, I would think that those who still had gasoline equipment would keep them going as long as they could, and then more than likely the sale of used gasoline equipment would drastically increase on the internet along with the prices. This would probably go on for some time until more and more people started to switch over to battery electric equipment. The demand would then drop and so would the prices. I don't know how long this would go on for, but I could imagine at least a decade or so. Hopefully by then the prices for electric equipment will have dropped due to an increased supply and more competition. The technology will improve by then as well and the equipment should be more capable to handle the needs of those who had to continue using gasoline powered equipment. I'm sure by the end, most of us will all be in the same situation, talking about our electric equipment problems, we'll be complaining about battery sizes, electric motors, and which brand is better than the other, and at the end of the day, watching the red blinking lights on several battery chargers as they sit on a table or hanging on the wall in our garage. But what if there was a ban on the usage of gasoline-powered equipment? Well, I can't speak for everyone, but if we want to get technical, if the ban is on gasoline-powered stuff, I would just convert my equipment to run on propane or some other fuel that's still available. I know that sounds petty, but if the law states the word gasoline, then I won't use it. I'll just move on to the next fuel source available. But what if there was a ban on the usage of gasoline-powered equipment? I can't speak for everyone, but if we want to get technical and if there was a ban on gasoline-powered stuff, I would just convert my equipment to run on propane or some other fuel that was still available. I know that sounds petty, but if the law states the word gasoline, then I won't use it. I'll just move on to the next fuel source. But what about two-cycle equipment? Well, that's going to be a bit tricky when it comes to propane. I guess I'll have to find a way to slowly inject two-cycle oil or any available oil into the intake while using propane to fuel the engine. I wonder if I could make the carb work to deliver oil instead of mixed fuel into the engine. I'm going to guess that the passages will be too small for the oil to even flow through it. Now, I haven't looked into alternative fuel sources for my equipment yet, but I think it would be a really interesting idea to look into if that day should ever come or if gasoline should become scarce. Now, there have been other channels that have tried powering four-cycle engines with alternative fuels, but I haven't seen one on two strokes yet. If you've seen a video like that, I'd like to know about it, and if not, I might have to make a video about that someday. Now, this trimmer was nowhere near as dirty as the pole saw that he also gave me, so it didn't take any time to get this one clean. I've already made the video on how I got this trimmer working again, so if you want to see that video, click on the link at the top right of the screen or in the video description. I hope you enjoyed watching me clean this trimmer and answer some of your questions. I do plan on doing more of these Q&As, and if I didn't answer your question, please don't be afraid to ask, and I'll answer them either in the comments, in email, or in a video like this one. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions. And I hope to see you in the next video.